Welcome to Team Building Cultures, the podcast designed to deliver tools and tips for improving team communication, collaboration, and fostering a culture where teams thrive. Now, here's your host, Beverly Hathorne, owner of Strategic HR Consultants. Hello, listeners, and thank you so much for joining me for yet another episode of Team Building Cultures. I am your host, Beverly Hathorne, owner of Strategic HR Consultants, where we believe that an organization's culture is the soil in which all things grow. Today, I'm going to be speaking with Mr. Stephen Turner. And just a little bit about Stephen. Stephen started his business career with UPS. Uh, where he was on the leadership for 34 of his 35 years. He spent five years in Europe as a finance director during the UPS initial international expansion. And after taking an early retirement, he moved into the entrepreneurial area where he and his wife started four businesses, including his executive coaching business, Flow Business Solution. He focuses on training business leaders to be true leaders as opposed to managers. Systems and processes and procedures are what we manage. People are what we lead. In the process, he trains leaders to develop their employees' personal goals, as well as training them for success and preparing them to assume greater responsibilities in the future. Today, Stephen is going to talk to us about stopping the resignation drain and how we can inspire our employees to be our strongest advocates. Thank you so much for joining me today, Stephen, and I very much look forward to this conversation. Well, I'm glad to be here. It's a pleasure. This is my favorite topic. Anything having to do with uh, leading people and developing them into their potential as well as fulfilling a business needs as well. Awesome. Absolutely. So to start, tell us a little bit about Flow Business uh, Solution. Tell us a little bit about your company. Yeah. Uh, Flow Business Solution was created uh, initially to help my wife's business uh, continue to grow. And then we branched out into uh, the executive coaching space. And uh, I focus on the things that I learned when I was in the management team at UPS that came as a result of experience and success. And uh, I was blessed when I was in the management team there because uh, I never found leading people to be difficult. So I got very confident in my ability. And we're taking that ability and revealing it to business owners uh, through Flow Business Solution. So any leaders that um, need some help on leading people as opposed to managing them, and most of the time you have to get into a conversation of what's the difference, and there's a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And, and if we manage people, we're going to have, we have resistance. People quit. If we lead people, they hang around. That's the that's really the bottom line. And there's all these all the intricacies uh, along that journey. I really love your uh, really uh, quick definition there or explanation. You know, of course, we all know that, you know, you manage things, you lead people. But to add to that, you've helped us understand that when you are trying to manage people, you're going to actually run them away. They're going to leave. They're, they're not going right. to go for that easily. But if you're leading them and most likely you're leading them in the direction that they want to go and that's well suited for them, they kind of come along a little easier. So that's, you know, that's something we should all keep in mind. So tell me about some of the major lessons that you've learned in your career to start out as a company and then go straight to leadership. I can think of all sorts of, um, difficulties and confusions and issues, but it also must have been exciting and rewarding. And uh, you probably felt really good about that. So tell us about some of the things that you encountered uh, in that transition. Well, the most important thing I encountered was uh, my first day, actually. So one of the things when I got started in the leadership world, um, I was 20 years old. So I was a sophomore in college, Uh, UPS has a great opportunity for college uh, students to be part-time managers, leaders, and so they can do their school and also do the business. And you get get an opportunity to be in both environments at the same time, which was quite nice. I enjoyed that. So when I first got started, uh, I got started early at the age of 20. As a result of that, the people that reported to me were going to be mostly older than I was. 
And uh, when you're 30, 40, 50, nobody really cares much. But when you're 20, 21, and 22, it matters. So I'm thinking, well, what am I going to do to make this work? And I made a simple decision. And it's been with me for ever since. And that is to treat people the way I'd like to be treated. Because in doing that, we really are putting ourselves in the other person's shoes on a continual basis. So as, you know, things need to happen, uh, new training, um, accountability, conversations and all that, uh, we just keep putting ourselves in their shoes. And we will, we have a tendency of making good decisions because we can put ourselves in the other person's shoes and see an issue from their side of the story. I like that. Treat people as you want yeah. to be treated. Yeah. Now it worked so well. I just kept at it. And as I walked through uh, my leadership career at UPS, I was very fortunate. UPS has something. This is what I experienced. You won't see it in writing, but I experienced it. If you do well, you're left alone. So I was left alone for 34 years on my uh, leadership journey there. And one of the great things that I had the opportunity was I would I worked in three different areas of the business. So when I was a part-time supervisor going to college, I worked in the package operations. Uh, when I graduated from college, um, I went into the finance and accounting, full-time leadership person. And I did that for 17 years. That included the five years I was in Europe that you mentioned on the introduction. And I uh, was a finance director there, covered uh, responsibilities in 10 different countries, which was a tremendous experience. Uh, I learned something very valuable over there that I didn't realize until I really came back and got into the coaching world. And that was that since I covered 10 different countries, ranging from the Scandinavian countries, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, down through Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, Greece, and Turkey on the south side, and Ireland over on the east side, I was in many cultures. And I discovered that cultures vary, but hearts do not. People are the same all over. If you treat them with respect and help them and train them, they will follow you because they benefit individually as well as uh, they feel that they're an important member of the organization that they're employed by. And those are all great things. So when I left Europe, I came back to the U.S. I wanted to stay in the international business. So to be able to do that, I had to move into the technology world and help uh, develop the, our technology resources that we use uh, internationally at UPS. So then I led te uh, technology teams after that. So the important thing, the, the point of going through that journey is it doesn't matter if it's operations, finance and accounting, it doesn't matter if it's the tech world, which that's another entirely different environment. It doesn't matter if you're in Europe or the United States. I passed through Asia as well. The bottom line remains the same. People are the same all over inside. We all have a heart and we all wanna do well. If you just remember that, it's a good place to be. That's that's such a, a basic, simplistic mm -hmm. concept that should come to us very easily. And I think sometimes uh, as leaders and um, and as employees, we get so caught up in the metrics of things, the processes, um, what is deemed to be good performance and what's not good performance that we kind of forget maybe to just uh, treat people the way we want to be treated. That goes for your employees, your customers, you know, anyone that you encounter. And if that doesn't work out well, at least you have a good reason or a good basis, um, you know, for why you took whatever steps that you took. So um, I, I, that is just so simplistic. And I think we forget that sometime. And it's good to see it come back around. Just treat people the way you want to be treated, you know, and you can't go wrong with that. Because as diverse as we are, we're all the same. As intricate as we are, and our experiences have been, we're still all the same. 
So tell me about some of the things that you learned uh, in the different cultures, uh, because you've got a vast, um, <laughs> broad experience with other cultures. What are some of the things that you learned in other cultures that were just a little bit different uh, for what would be the Western world? Right. The interesting thing about working in different cultures is you need to learn the culture. So, for example, in Denmark, the folks up there aren't real in, really in favor of overtime because it, it digs into their nightlife and they like family time. So it's best not to run the business with much overtime. And if we do that, they're happy, right? If you go to Germany, for as, an, as another example, Germany is very structured. They're very good at following procedures. So when you set procedures up, you can bet they'll follow it from A to Z, which is great. They're very thorough and they're very, uh, very uh, reliable. But I did learn this, that if they run up against something that doesn't fall in the procedure, they can stop. And that's been so anti my way of doing things because I inspire people that when you run into a challenge, do your best to deal with the challenge, you know. I'm here to help you, but don't be afraid to take, you know, take your experience and put it to good, good work. So I, I went through a bit of a training session on that one in uh, Germany, because that was a real live event. And then one day, the person I was talking to said, wait, I got it. I got it. We're good. We'll be fine. And that was the end of it. When you get further south into um, the people in the Netherlands are, are very flexible the people in Belgium are more rigid, yet they're right next to each other. When you get down to uh, Turkey, I, I was down there a lot because we had an agent down there. And I had a person come up to me, an accounting clerk from the business that I was working with, and the agent came to me. And this is what relationships can do for you. He came up to me one day, and I'd been there you know, a number of times, so he knew who I was. He said, you know... Turkish business people get admired for what they get away with with American companies. So I just stuck that in my hip pocket in case I ever needed it. Fortunately, I didn't because I had a good relationship with the with the agent. But um, and because I understood the way the culture worked and because I had a good relationship with the agent, um, we got through many things that could have been challenging simply because we got along. And those are, you know, those are valuable things. If you go to Asia, they're also pretty um, structured in formality. And sometimes they can appear to be a little bit on the cold side, but that's just their culture. They still will do good work and they want to be appreciated as well. So those things happen. And, you know, once you learn them, you're in good shape. So. Very interesting. Especially where you say uh, the uh, in Germany, they're uh, well in Asia, they're structured, and that yeah. that is sometimes a setback of processes that give you step after step, and there's no yeah. room for thinking out the box, and there's no delegation, and there's no you know people don't really get to exercise that muscle. Um, when when I was leading teams, there were many occasions when something came up that wasn't clearly documented the best step to take. So I just had to use my uh, experience and my knowledge and just make what I used to call executive decisions decision, and, yeah. and step out there and ask for permission later. You know, at least exactly. if it was the wrong decision, I had reasoning and uh, information and data for taking that strategic move, for taking whatever move, you know, I took. So, you yeah. know, that's that's one of the things that um, I guess we're fortunate to have here because I think in many Western uh, organizations, we get lots of opportunity to think out the box because, you know, we're, we're kind of yeah, out there on our own sometimes. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's interesting. That's such a a, a wide I, I've never been to any of those countries, unfortunately, would like to go to all of them. But um, that's that's such a wonderful uh, span of experience and culture and meeting people and learning how other um, countries do things. So that's that, that's really great for you. So um, what are you working on now? What's going on now? 
Well, right now uh, we are developing a new product and it is a, it's packaging what we do, but preparing it for the, for larger companies and the corporate world. Um, there is a statistic out there that's been around since 1990 that the Gallup organization produces. And the number says this, 85% of people are not fully engaged in their work, which means only 15% are. But I look at this and I think, this is nuts. And that's that was my initial reaction because I never experienced that in what I the people I led. I never experienced people not being fully engaged. So I'm thinking, so what's with this? Well, at the same time, my business partner was also exposed to the same number. And she came, she grew up in corporate America as well, but she was more on the project side of things. Like she was at AT AT&T when wireless started and, and all that cool stuff. She also saw the statistic and was looking at it and was personally challenged to find an answer to that issue. So I'm looking at it from my view, from being leading a business, a group of people. She's looking at it from the perspective of it really turns out to be accountability uh, measures, activities that corporations need to have. You know, the larger the organization, the more you need some accountability tools so that the CEO or the business owner that made the decision to invest in changing the leadership of their company has accountability tools so that down the road, the leader knows it's still happening, right? So anyway, we're putting this together and we know exactly what we want to do to go out into corporate America and change the environment that has sustained the statistic for 32 years. And that's really the issue. So what tends to happen here, when the statistic comes out, every year it comes out, For a couple of months, some business leaders get excited about, gee, is that impacting my business? But it's really a guess. They don't know for sure. So they may decide, well, I'm going to have a seminar. And I remember when the the empowerment was the buzzword of the season. So you might have a seminar on empowerment. Unfortunately, seminars don't do it. Because when that leader who's been in the seminar and learned about empowerment comes back into his business unit, back to the status quo, the status quo takes over. And this is an important piece of the puzzle. When an employee gets started on day one, they are the most moldable they're going to be in their entire life there. They know nothing. So when you bring somebody in on day one, our objective needs to be long-term sustainability for any employee beginning on day one. Because if we do, we'll get them off to a good start. We have to explain how they fit into the puzzle of the big big picture. Where's their fit? Then we need to train them so they're successful. Once they're trained and successful in the reason they were hired, and you come to that person, and I do this every time. It's like if I came to you. I say, Beverly, you've been you've done a great job here so far. You've, got, you've learned your job. You're doing great. What would you like to do in three to five years? Now, I'll get a deer in the headlights look on the first pass. You know, like, no one's ever asked me that question before. That's okay. Circle around a couple weeks later, I'm going to ask the question again. Now they're going to have an answer. To one degree or another. The point is, two things have happened now. Number one, the fact that I even asked the question showed personal interest in them as an individual, not just the business. Then I get the second opportunity. Well, first of all, they get to respond, and then I get to respond to that, and it basically goes like this. That's a great idea. Let's see how we can help you get there. Now, they may say something that says, I'd like to do that job in this business, or they may say, sometime down the road, I would like to be an actress, right? Whatever whatever they say, try to find something to help them get to their personal goal. And you can usually do both of them at the same time because people function as an individual through everything. I've only had one person lead my employment in 
34 years at UPS and 10 years plus thereafter. Because there is value in the fact that I care about them. So we can do, I, I'm going to pull on something Richard Branson said one time. I got to use his. He said it perfectly. He said, train people so they have the ability to leave, but treat them so they don't want to. That's That wonderful. is perfect. That's, That's perfect. perfect. Right. So leaning on his words, that's the concept that we that we really should try to get to and move it forward continually, continually. And if we remember to continue to treat employees in that perspective so that I will ask the question once, what would you like to do in three to five years? But I'm going to keep adding, asking the question, following the development of the person every few months. Right. And it's going to continue. And that is a great environment to work in. People won't leave. And I can tell you this. I'm honest when I tell you this. The number of people that resigned under me all the time at UPS, almost zero. Almost zero percent. Not 9.3, which is the average in the United States. Practically zero. And it's really proof in the pudding that it works always in every scenario. I, I, I definitely see where that would uh, be effective because as an employee, when you come to me uh, with those questions, what do I want to do? And, you know, wh how, how soon do I want to do that? And, you know, you've shown an interest in me as an individual. I'm not just another cog in the wheel. And now exactly. you've also given me a goal. You've also... You, you know, formed mm -hmm. a goal in my mind that I'm now, I now know why I'm doing this that I'm doing because it's going to help me get to this other point. And then with your interest in me, you're investing time and energy, not just money, you're investing time and energy in me, which of course makes me feel like I belong. So I think that's, that's, yeah, I, I can see where that would definitely be effective. So most definitely, I'm sure that my leaders will, uh, that are listening will definitely take heed to that. And even, you know, we have employees that listen here also. So even some of those employees might um, suggest such a thought process to their leadership. So I, I think that's wonderful. And you know, that you you have really you have really good um, um, leadership principles. And they're they're very basic, but as you said, they have worked for you. You've been all over the world using these principles and applying these principles. And so you can definitely say to us that this works. So just treat people like you want to be treated and show an interest in your people and then help them get where they're trying to go. That some really basic stuff, Stephen. And, you basic know, really, stuff that constantly yep, works. That constantly works. Wow. That's yep. interesting. So if our, our listeners who want to get in touch with you and learn more about your company and, and what you do and maybe take an opportunity to, um, you know, engage with you from a leadership perspective, um, building their careers. How do they reach you? Okay. You can reach me in a couple different ways. Number one, our phone number is 267-753-5568. That's 267- 753-5568. And then you can also go to our website, which is www.flow with a hyphen business hyphen solution singular.com. And we have a contact form there uh, that you could reach out to. You can send me an email. You can find me at Steve at flow hyphen business hyphen solution.com. Those ways you'll find me. And I'm also at LinkedIn under SW Turner. There are a number of Steve Turners in LinkedIn, but there's only one SW Turner. 
Gotcha. And we will definitely put all that contact information in our marketing materials and when the show airs. So, you know, I just want to review really quickly uh, some of the key points you've given us. Number one, which I really like, of course, the golden rule, treat people like you want to be treated. And then also consider that cultures yep. vary, but hearts do not. So, you know, right. no matter where you're at, where you're leading, what you're doing, you know, just remember that hearts do not do not change. And then employee retention begins on day one. Don't wait until they're unhappy and uh, you're seeing right. signs that they may want to leave. Start on day one. Let them know yeah. how important they are as soon as they start. Let that be a part of your onboarding process. Let them exactly. know how important they are. This is all wonderful yeah. information, Stephen. So, and um, on behalf of uh, Strategic HR Consultants, I want to thank you so much for all these jewels and gems that you've dropped for us today. Is there any last little tidbits that you wanted to leave us with? Well, let's just say that uh, the process of leading people is never ending. So they, it, it really... It, it goes in development phases, but the phases continual. And as long as we're continual, they will realize because we're going to appreciate them along the way, right? Nice job, good work, da, 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 da. but and it's all real. It's it is supposed to be inspirational, not manipulation. So if we're speaking from the heart, they will receive a heart message. Wonderful. So to my listeners out there. If you want to hear more on these types of topics, be sure to join us on the Team Building Cultures podcast, or you can reach out to us and contact us uh, as Strategic HR Consultants. Our website is customermeasures with an S dot com. Again, that's customermeasures.com, or you can just give us a call the old-fashioned way, 888-272-7711. So for Team Building Cultures and Strategic HR Consultants, I am your host, Beverly Hathorne, and we're signing off until we see you next time. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Team Building Cultures. We hope we have delivered helpful and enlightening information to help you create your dream team. Join us next time.